Animation, art, cast, character design, choreography, emotion, fan service, fight scenes, OST, narrative, and relatability. These are some of the few things that people take into consideration when judging a piece of fiction, as well as formulating their own opinion on it. Not that it's necessary, of course, after all a person can end up liking something solely because it piques their interest. However, even if that is the case, it's highly likely that person may just not realize how big of a role one of these things can play in them liking the piece of fiction that they like. And whether taken in piece for piece or altogether, the truth is that these concepts will always be the deciding factor in how objectively good a story is labeled. Take Naruto, for example. Based on narrative, fan service, no, not that kind of fan service and relatability alone, I'm sure we can all agree that there are many anime and manga that do way better in those categories. Not saying it handles these bad by any means, but they also weren't the strongest parts of Naruto. And still, while that may be the case, looking at fight scenes, choreography, and emotion on the other hand, there's no denying that the series almost always hits the mark with those moments. Seeing as it doesn't inherently do bad in any category, we can generally label it a great anime. But based off fights alone, you could arguably proclaim it the best battle shonen ever made. It's one thing to do great in any one of these categories, but it's safe to say that overall, rather than in any specific category, some of the best works of fiction can effectively integrate all these concepts in one story and with a great degree of finesse. Off the top of my head, there are a few anime and manga I can think of that do this effectively, but in today's video we'll specifically be taking a look at an anime named Code Geass and its unique way of pulling this off. Code Geass is an anime that, as of the time of its making, was based on an alternate and distant future of the year 2017. In this world, most culture and religion is assimilated by a superpower that would come to be known as Britannia, alongside two other great nations, the Chinese Federation and the European United. Among all cultures, religions, and races, there was but one that remained fully independent of this three-way system, the Japanese. This was possible on account of the economic control Japan had through possessing 70% of the world's total supply of sakuradite, which is a material used in the development of more advanced technology. The oppression that Japan used through this economic control led to tensions with Britannia. In response, Britannia using the knowledge and power gained from uniting most of the world, mass-produced weapons known as nightmares, which are essentially mechs utilized by the entire military. They used these nightmares to completely overpower all of Japan's resisting forces, leaving nothing but a wasteland of what used to be Japan, now known as Area 11, and entirely degrading any Japanese still left after the assault, even going so far as to refer to them as what would become a new derogatory term, Elevens. The story revolves around a 17 year old that goes by the name of Lelouch, who understands the pain of the Japanese and wishes for peace between Japan and Britannia. This is mainly due to him and his younger sister having been childhood friends of one before all the conflict ensued and wanting to create a world where his younger sister could live in peace. For years, he didn't quite know how he would go about achieving this, spending his days as an ordinary high school student. This was until a miraculous encounter with a mysterious girl who would grant him a certain tool that he goes on to use in an attempt to attain the world peace he so desired. Now this video isn't meant to be a review so much as just an analysis of the show for those who may want to watch it or those who already have. But for context of how effectively it does those categories I spoke about earlier, I wanted to give a brief summary of the show. Starting with non-story related things like animation, art, and character design. Now with character design, well, uh, I mean, I guess it's cool. Personally, I don't have a problem with it. In fact, I think it's pretty unique. But there are a couple of people I've seen on occasion saying it's not for them and that the characters look too slim, which I can understand, at least from most angles. <clears throat> but that's mainly character design anyway. In terms of art, I don't think there's any limit to just how much I could praise it. From the landscapes to the still shots and even openings and endings, the show always delivers. I could go on and on, but I'll just leave it at that. When it comes to animation, the show is fairly fluid and consistent, at least from what I remember. While doing my research for this video, I looked into different scenes to try to refresh my memory of any bad incidents of animation, but I honestly couldn't find anything. Not saying there are any, but definitely none I could take notice of. And again, Studio Sunrise isn't exactly known for missing in the animation department. But overall, very mixed feelings throughout the fandom about character design, art is just incredible, and most can vouch for its clean animation. 
Fight scenes, choreography, fan service, and OST are definitely a huge part of what this anime does really well. Alongside a very good story, Code Geass has a plethora of flashy, well choreographed, and anticipated fights throughout the show. They're tense and uncertain, unlike most anime where you can make the general guess that the good guy will come out on top without losing too much in return. Strategy, tactics, and flexibility play a huge role into the outcome of a battle. If you're the type of person that likes heated fights the most in an anime, I can't really recommend this show to you because fights aren't the only thing it revolves around. Though if you're willing to give it a try and sit through everything else it has to offer as well, I can assure you there are more than a fair share of great fights throughout the anime. When it comes to fan service in anime, people typically refer to it as the eye candy or plot added to please the audience in certain ways. <clears throat> And while I will admit that Code Geass definitely has a great share of that kind of fan service, generally the word is used to describe something the viewers want to happen in an anime. Sort of like how everybody and their mom as children wanted Super Saiyan 4 Gohan and Dragon Ball Super Heroes actually made it a thing. In Code Geass, there's a 50-50 chance that what you want to happen in a situation will happen. And with how high the stakes can be, when it doesn't go the way you want it to, the payoff can be pretty drastic. But that just means when something good does happen, you'll find yourself relieved and I think that's a great way of structuring big moments in the show. And all of this is partnered with what I think is an incredible OST. There's a sound for any and every situation and it fits the theme of the show really well. It would definitely be among my favorite anime soundtracks out there. So moving on to the more story related things which is by far the most controversial topic of the show. I'd say it nails them pretty well. Well enough in fact that as a whole it's probably one of the best written anime of all time up there with the likes of Attack on Titan and such. Now no story is perfect but I feel people highly over exaggerate the flaws of Code Geass. With the brief summary I gave earlier it's pretty easy to tell where the aspects of emotion, relatability, and narrative fit into this anime. The story has many twists and turns to it that seem to reshape the end goal a number of times as well as the way the characters themselves think. Some occur unexpectedly and others are easy to see through both for viewers and characters. These twists usually have huge stakes to them, which brings me back to what I said before about fan service, and why it can feel really good or hurt really bad when a situation takes a certain turn. Many of these decisions come down to emotion that a character feels regarding a circumstance or just a mistake, which ties into the topic of emotion and relatability we feel while watching. It makes us question how we would feel and what we would do in these positions. Many people believe that you can't have those emotions when trying to accomplish something as grand as changing the world, which is why I believe people question and disagree with some of the decisions being led by emotion. Needless to say, we're all human and that holds true for these characters as well. Some choices need to be made through instinctual emotion and gut feeling, regardless of how wrong it seems, and these characters stick by it. As for mistakes, we make them all the time in our day-to-day -day lives. I'd be lying if I said I didn't make a couple of mistakes while typing up the script for this video, and you probably made one while watching. When it comes to these mistakes, people often label them as a cheap way to further the plot after Code Geass or any relatable anime or manga writes itself into a corner. But the truth is, all it comes down to is these being totally reasonable, albeit terribly timed mistakes on behalf of the characters, not the writers. Sort of like when your family walks in on you watching an action-packed episode of Fire Force, and it cuts to a scene where Tamaki magically starts getting naked. Yeah, like that. Nevertheless, this brings us to the end of the video. Hopefully this gave you some insight as to why you should watch it if you haven't, and cleared up why it's so highly regarded by some of us if you have. I know a lot of people that would give it less than a 10 out of 10, but all the same, I understand the reason, and as I like to say, not everything is for everyone. But if you do decide to check it out, feel free to let me know in the comments. Also for anyone that already has, I'd like to know your thoughts and opinions on the anime as well as what you'd rate it, but try to keep it spoiler free for anyone who hasn't seen it. Anyways, that said, as always, this has been Tenta. Stay easy, guys.